This is a really hardcore college algebra book. This is like the most hardcore college algebra book that I've seen. It is intense and I love it. It's called New College Algebra and it's by Marcus and Meek. And again, out of all of the college algebra books I have, I think that this one is probably the most interesting in the sense that it has mathematics that you wouldn't expect to find in a book like this. So, And it has things that it does that are a little bit interesting, which I'll show you soon. New College Algebra, Marvin Marcus and Henrik Meek. And here's the date, 1968. Wow, wow, that's a long time ago. To David C. Marcus and Ralph D. Mintz. And let's just jump to the contents and jump into the book. Sets, numbers, and functions. Systems and polynomials. So number systems and polynomials. Linear equations, matrices, and inequalities. So just basic mathematics, which is kind of nice. It's nice to review stuff. You've, most of you have probably seen some of these things. And then combinatorics, that's four. You've got mathematical induction, permutations and combinations, and then exponential and logarithmic functions. So it appears as if, you know, by looking at the content, you wouldn't think that this book has a lot of you know, other things that it doesn't really list in the contents. It's got a table of common logarithms and it has answers. Look at this, to quizzes and selected exercises. So the quizzes are super hardcore because you read the section and then you have 10 true false questions and they're conceptual and then you have the answers to those questions. It makes this an awesome book for self-study. Uh, I, I don't know if this book is available, like how available it is. Uh, I will look. I am sure there are used copies online. I'm pretty sure it's out of print, uh, but I will try to leave uh, a link in the description if I can find it. Um, I know I did not pay a lot for this book. If n is the set of all whole numbers and e is the set of all even whole numbers, then e is a subset of n. So you have to look at these questions and you have to answer if they are true or false. And the beautiful thing is that if you go to the back of the book, so this is 1.1, Let's find it to make sure they're all there. I've looked for other ones, but I haven't looked at 1.1. Yep, yep, quiz, you have all of the answers. Right here, they even give you a counterexample. That's great, <laughs> it's just so nice. And then you have answers to some of the exercises. So it doesn't give you answers to all of the exercises, but you get answers to some. And I'm just, it's just a fun book. It's just a fun book. What's this, vector operations? Look, it's talking about fields. It uses, it uses field, you know, it, it introduces them. Let F be any one of the fields, Q, R, or C. An n vector over F is just an ordered n tuple of numbers in F. It S, X is an n vector or simply a vector if n is understood. If, yeah, that's just notation for vectors. That's great. You can make it bold or put a little vector arrow or something over it if you like, but yeah, cool. Really cool, right, this book? This book has interesting stuff. What's this matrices? So we've got some matrix computations. People really don't like those. Uh, those take a lot of work to get good at. Um, you know, if you're taking a class where you actually have to, um, you know, do that, then it can be pretty tedious, especially if you have to do it like on a test. Uh, it's a little bit stressful. You know, you make a little mistake, so you really, really got to be really quick and good at it. Answer true or false. Wow. And then we have exercises. Yeah, very interesting book. Very interesting book. Here it talks about the algebra of functions. Look, it even uses function notation. So this is something that um, people um, don't learn anymore in school, right? This is not taught in college algebra classes. But yet, at this point in time, at least if you were taking a class with this book in 1968, perhaps, um, that would be something that was taught. So it's interesting how, how things change. Someone recently left a comment. It was, I think, today. Um, I think I responded. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. They asked, uh, why math books? Um, well, is it true in general that older math books are harder than, than newer math books? And I think that 
there's you can make arguments for both ways, but in general, I feel like more books in the past were harder than new books now today. So, yeah, there's definitely been a shift, um, and other material is emphasized. You know, so there's there's things now that are in books that weren't in books back then. So there's you know there's there are shifts. Sets with two operations, rings and fields. Wow. Wow, what a book. So this book can teach you mathematics. You know, even though it's an algebra book, you can learn some algebra that's actually beyond um, what's, what's you know, normally taught in algebra classes. I mean, a lot of this stuff, so the functional notation, which I was showing you, you would, you would learn that if you took like a proof writing class. That's when you would learn something like that. You normally wouldn't learn that in you know, an algebra book like this. That's what makes this book so special. You know, here it talks about one-to-one -one functions. I mean, that's, that's so cool. Now that is something you learn in algebra classes, but again, just the notation, the formalities. Um, I mean, look at these true-false questions. I mean, these are, if a function is one-to-one, -one, then it is onto, that is false. If a function is onto, then it is one-to-one, -one. that is also false. So then you have different, different things here, and there's more. And yeah, I mean, you can spend a lot of time on these. These are t you have to really know your stuff to, to answer some of those questions. Some of them are easier and some of them are harder. Sketch the graph of the function f from r into r defined by f of x equals 2 plus 2x minus x squared. So it looks like they're just plugging in some numbers, right? Just grinding it out. Observe that the function seems to grow nicely for values of x up to x equals 1. Wow. And then to decrease continually, it may be worthwhile to examine the behavior of f for a few values of x near 1. Interesting. So that he observes that from the table here, you see, um, because he puts those numbers... Um, that they put they put those numbers that they plugged into the function here and so that's what he's talking about there yeah because I guess calculators uh, I mean 1968 I don't I don't I don't I don't think so I don't believe uh, they were around then um, I, I'm, calculators I don't know much about early calculators um, so yeah Calculators, you know, um, were, I think they were really expensive when they, when they first came out. I think um, they, they were kind of like DVDs. Those were really expensive. When they think things, usually new things uh, during any era, when they come out, they're expensive. Computers used to be very expensive. Look at all this mathematics. So much math. Anyways... I should just end this video. Oh, groups! Look at this. If the set S together with the operation cross satisfies axioms 1, 2, 3, and 4, then the pair S with that X is called the group. That's the operation. Yeah. Cool. The axioms are explained on the previous pages. Um, looks like they go through it very, very carefully, right? So that's interesting how, how carefully it does all of it there. It's like, okay, it spends time on each thing. Um, whereas if you were to learn this from an abstract algebra book, it would just be like a little blurb, it would be a definition. So you do get, you do get that from this book as well. So even though you could just get a book on abstract algebra, um, you get different perspectives from books like this because it's not a book on abstract algebra, right? It's a book on college algebra and then presenting this to that specific audience. So usually the explanations are toned down and they're a little bit better and easier to understand. The same is true if you're trying to learn like uh, partial differential equations. If you can find like, um, I recently made a video, I think I talked about it, it was the fundamentals of uh, differential equations with applied boundary value problems. And that book is interesting because it has partial differential equations in it, but it's a book for DE students, right? So it's written at a level for DE students. So it has a nice beginner intro uh, for partial DEs. So just like this would have a nice intro for group theory, even though it's a college algebra book. Anyways, I hope it's been helpful. Good luck.